Hey everybody, hope you are doing good. Now, I've been asked a question in the academy in regards to a, uh, a relatively simple technique of being able to kind of encrypt data, so kind of secure it in your database so it cannot be read by uh, kind of any prying eyes. And also as well, a method of being able to, to decrypt that data back to your client application. So how could you go about that in Superbase? Well, there's, I guess there's a whole different host of different ways to be able to achieve this. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through a technique that I've used before, use a little bit of ChatGP just to kind of create um, all of the sample code that we need. And I'm going to walk through the process of implementing this and just to kind of demonstrate this technique. And of course, you can then take that into your own projects. So on the left hand side here, I've got a brand new Superbase database. It's squeaky clean. There's no tables. There's no functions. There's nothing created whatsoever. Of course, your project will probably be fully loaded with um, sort of tables and all that kind of stuff. And on the right here, I've just kind of got my kind of chat GPT kind of reference window up here so you can kind of see uh, kind of what I'm copy and pasting into Superbase to kind of get this up and running. I want to be other screens here on the right hand side. I kind of got my terminal window. I'm going to bring that in because we'll just execute some curl kind of terminal scripts here just to kind of like demonstrate the uh, kind of the technique in terms of calling out to the edge functions and getting what we need back. So the first thing that we want to do with inside our Superbase table, uh, sorry, our Superbase database is create our table. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a really, really basic table here called a customer data. This has kind of got a typical ID here, here, which is the primary key. We've got a field, which is a customer name. And then we've also got a field, which is an email. Now you'll notice here that we're using a byte array here. So this is not like a, a typical kind of standard kind of text field with inside uh, kind of a Superbase. And so the whole idea is that any data that kind of sits in this particular database table will certainly be a little bit more secure than keeping it open with a kind of a text based column or anything like that. So first thing that we're going to do is we are going to copy this create table. I'm going to move up here to the, uh, the actual SQL editor, hit the little plus here, create a new snippet and just paste that into here. If I get my copy and paste right there, it is. So this is just going to quite simply create that table. So let's just run that. That's all going to be created for us. And I can just obviously go and see that table here there it is all creative got kind of no data in it whatsoever we're going to come back very shortly and we're going to kind of create some sample data in fact let's create that sample data now because that's probably a good thing to do i'm just going to sort of skip down here a little bit because i've kind of got some sort of like you know some sample sql statements here just to kind of set that data so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut a couple of different records in here um, if i just go back over to my sql editor I'll do it just in here, actually, just paste those in. So let's insert some customer data. I'm going to insert a customer name and an email address. You can see here I've got John Doe and I've got this particular kind of secret key, which I'm kind of using with inside this specific kind of a Postgres function. This is going to be super important. You can see here this is doing the encryption. Now, there is an equivalent function to this to do the decrypt. We'll come back to that very shortly. So I'm just going to be putting with inside the customer name field, John Doe. And within the email, I'm going to be passing in this particular sample email address. And likewise, down here with Jane and Jane Smith. So let's just quickly run those here. Let's hit run. There it goes. I'll go back to my table. And then if I look at this, you can see here we've got the customer data here. But as you can see here, it's not the typical kind of text based values that we kind of inserted here. So we know that they're going to be somewhat protected from us using this particular secret key here, which we will be using very shortly to kind of decrypt that information. So that's all good. So let's look up. Let's go a little bit further up here. Let's see what next steps that we need to do. So there's our table. And now we are going to create some functions here, some uh, Postgres functions to kind of do the um, kind of the encryption and the decryption. But we're going to first focus on getting the decrypted customer data, because, of course, in your front end application that will call out into the Superbase Edge function, you're going to want to kind of retrieve the decrypted information from the Superbase database. And that's exactly what this particular function is setting ourselves up to do. So you can see here it's going to be called get decrypted uh, customer data. We are going to pass it in a secret, uh, a secret key, sorry, which is of type text. And you can see here, this is our particular table here, which will match the table that's, that you saw just a second ago. And here is the actual query itself. So what we do is we're doing a select here from the customer data uh, table. And then here we're going to pull out the date, the ID that doesn't need to be kind of decrypted. But of course, the two particular columns, the byte arrays that we created earlier, do need to be decrypted. So here is 
the specific function here. And here is the kind of the column name, but well, there's the table name and there is the actual column itself. And here is the secret key that we're passing in. And we're gonna do the same here for the customer email address as well. So I'm gonna now uh, basically create this function. Now what this is gonna do is this is gonna create kind of like a, uh, like a Postgres function for us, but we're not gonna use this directly. We're gonna use an edge function, which will call out into this particular Postgres uh, function, I'm sorry, the Superbase function, which will then return that back to the edge function. So let's now create that. So this is just going back into the SQL now. Let's move over to SQL editor. Let's just do that just down here. And I'm just going to paste that in here like that. And I'm just going to quite simply just run the whole of the statement there. So if I run that, that should be no rows return. This is what we're expecting to see here. So that is all good. Now, what about the equivalent to that? We need to look at the edge function itself. So here is the edge function. I'll just scroll down here. Here is the edge function that's going to read that data. Now, the good thing about an edge function is really kind of by the name, really, an edge function. So this sits right within inside your kind of your super base kind of infrastructure, your project just sits there. And it's going to be kind of where we are going to be interacting, which itself is then going to be calling out to our actual database itself and then pulling all of those values out. So the great thing about Superbase, certainly in 2025, they made some changes, which allows us to create these functions directly within Superbase itself which is a great time saver because you used to have to kind of install the Superbase CLI, which you can still do. You don't have to do that. And of course, you can now just copy and paste these directly in. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to paste this in there first, and then we're going to walk through exactly what it does. So I'm going to go now over to the, uh, the uh, uh, edge functions here, and I'm going to hit up where it says via editor here. I'm just going to hit open editor, and I'm just going to replace everything that we've got here and then just paste that in. So I don't worry about the underline here. That's just kind of the, the text editor that's kind of uh, sort of highlighting that. So you can see here we've got some particular values that it needs. So it's got a super base URL that's kind of retrieving those internally here. These are already made available to the edge function itself. But there's this other one called encryption key, which we're going to need to create in a second with inside the secret section. And we'll do that in just a moment. And here is just a little bit of fail safe here. It just returns back a 500 if we're not providing any of these, uh, these values here above where we are. So we should never hit that. And then, of course, here I'm creating that client itself and I'm passing the URL and the Superbase key. These are the two kind of uh, environment variables that are set here. We're passing that with inside the create client. Now, once we've got an instance of that, of course, we're then going to make that request out using a remote procedure call here to the get decrypted customer data. Now, that is the function that we just created earlier itself. So it's doing a call out to that. And then, of course, it's passing in a parameter here. If you remember it, it, it was expecting us to pass in the secret key here now we're going to pass in the encryption key that's just up here and then of course we're not going to hopefully not hit an error and then we're going to receive the response back it's going to kind of stringify the data and this will return us back an array of values within inside our super base table itself so pretty simple. We're not here to sort of teach coding, but of course, if you want this to be broken down a little bit, then of course use ChatGPT or some other kind of AI tool to kind of exp maybe explain this a little bit more sort of uh, in, in, in layman's terms, I guess, in terms of what it's doing. But that's it in a million miles an hour. Now here, we need to give this a function name. Now I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do here is this has got um, the name up here that I'm just gonna kind of take here, this get customer data. So I'm just going to now just put that in here and then deploy the function. Now that's gonna deploy and it should all be successful. And what we're seeing here is we're seeing the details of the function here. Here is the endpoint that I can call here. Um, but I've got another way of doing it here. I can go to then the, uh, the uh, well, let me find, I can remember, remember where they do this. Uh, is under the code details. In fact, it's down here. I think there it is. Wow, it's because I've got everything kind of moved, uh, uh, sort of allowing space here on the right hand side. I couldn't even remember where it was. So there is here is the curl script that I can now take. Now I'm just going to copy that now with inside. Oh, in fact, I can't do that. There's one thing I've forgotten to do, and that is I need to create the secret. So here is the secret now. And if you remember, we have this uh, is this variable that's looking for this environment variable here called encryption key. So I need to paste that just in here like that. Now what is 
is the value? Well, of course, it's the value that I used up here. This is the kind of the encryption key that I kind of use. Now, of course, you could go and generate this anywhere at all in some kind of random editor, you know, kind of make something up that's pretty secure for yourself. And I'm just going to paste that in here like that and hit save. That's going to create that just down here. There it is. So that's now available now in inside my edge function. So, of course, I can now go back to the actual, uh, go back to the functions here. I don't know why it keeps coming up. It's annoying me. Right. Let's uh, let's go into the function itself. Let's go down to the details. Let's scroll back down here. Let's grab hold of this particular function. So let's just uh, copy that here. Let's move over to my terminal window. And I'm just going to paste that in here like that. And I'm just going to hit enter. Now, what I should see there is I should see two records come back, which I quite simply do here. You can see here, this is an array here. You can see you've got the open and square braces there. And of course, you can then see the, the actual uh, sorry, the square brackets. And then you can see the braces here, which return me turn, returning me back two rows from my database. You can see ID 2 and ID 1. So that could, uh, that could now be naturally available now to my front end application. But the key thing to point out here is that all of my data has now been decrypted. So the uh, edge function is kind of done its trick is called out into the into the super base function itself it's kind of then done all of the work for us and return that back to the client so that's great so we've now got the ability to now query data but what about inserting records so let's move on to that bit now so if i just move that over here let's now look at what's next so we've done that, this one here now let's look at the inserting of a customer data now, uh, before we do that, we do need to create the edge function, uh, sorry, the, uh, the actual Postgres function to kind of do that for us. So here it is here. Let's, uh, let's move down here to the insert encrypted data. Let's just copy the code here. Let's go back over to then the SQL editor. Let's just go back down here. Let's uh, press enter. Let's paste that in here. And let's talk about a little bit about what it's doing. So here it's called insert customer data. It's expecting uh, sort of the, a text of the name, email address, and the secret key to be passed in and of course this is where it's kind of doing the magic whereas inserting into the customer data table we're passing the customer name and the email of course which is provided and then of course it's then going to use the reverse of the decryption and it's going to use this particular function here called encrypt which is going to pass in for the customer name the name that I'm passing in and then the email is passing in there the plain email and of course it's passing in the secret key so that is all that we need to do so it's very very similar to the first one if I just hit run there like that there we go that's all created and of course we now need to move now on to the actual edge function so let's go down here let's create the next one of these so let's just move where are we let's go down here so here we go so here is the insert customer data now I'm just gonna copy everything that's being provided here like that Let's uh, deploy a new function. Let's go via the editor. Let's replace all of that here. Let's paste that in there. And let's give this its name of insert customer data like that. Let's put that just down here, set that. And um, all we simply need to do then is hit the deploy function. Um, there's nothing special here to tell you anything about this other than the fact actually is that here you can see that it's um, this uh, particular function um, would operate under a post request. You can see here that I'm, I would be passing in the customer name and the email address. And I'll demonstrate that just in a second on the terminal. Everything else pretty well much remains the same. We've got that little check in there. And then here we're creating the client. And then again, we're passing the customer name and the email address here into this particular function function that we've just created which was expecting a customer name and the email with the encryption key and of course that's going to uh, sort of perform that call back call out into that particular function and I expect that row to be created and of course I shouldn't expect to see an error and then but I will then see the message come out and um, with inside the terminal which will say insert successful so with all of that let's just we've got the name in there let's just deploy that function that should all go in there let's scroll down here let's grab hold of this particular curve here now this is a post request as I said before let's bring this up here let's just uh, let's just clear this let's just paste that in here and I need to make a little change because this is the data that I'm going to pass in so if you're using your client side application then you would be passing in something like customer name like that and I'm just gonna delete that and say this is Steve I'm gonna do a comma and then this is just gonna be email with a colon there and then I'm just going to put my email address in here the, dig the digital doesn't matter what I put in here the digital pro at oh, 
outlook.com like that. So there's my data, customer name, email address, that matches the, uh, the table rows uh, or the columns, hit enter, and then that should come back and say insert successful. Now, of course, if I go now go back to my table and I go to my customer data, you can see this third row here and you see that um, none of this is now uh, kind of in view of my eyes. So that is all good. So um, you can then move on to the update. Um, I don't really need to walk through this because, again, it's the same kind of rinse and repeat exercise, really. If we go back up here, we've kind of got this update and we would just do the same thing that we did before. They will create this particular uh, sort of uh, super base function here, which is going to allow us to pass in the, the actual ID itself of one update a row. Obviously, I'll be setting a new name, a new email address. The secret goes in there as well. And here, this is the kind of the update and where we're doing the sets here, the customer data. Data, and there's a customer name and email address is doing the encryption again passing the plain name plain email address which is up here and um, where the ID equals uh, the customer ID of one and of course that I could just do exactly the same thing again do that and then go down to the actual function itself and of course I would just do the same rinse and repeat exercise here where I'll just paste that in as a new edge function set the name and I would be good to go and of course I can then call out via the command line um, and just basically set the ID in the in the uh, terminal itself uh, with the new name and new email address and, and and then go with it. So that's pretty well much it. I mean, the whole idea of this really just a quick walkthrough, a quick um, understanding of kind of um, something that I've used previously. Like I said, use ChatGPT here really just to kind of like make it easy for me to kind of walk through here and kind of demonstrate this very, very simple technique. Um, but of course, not all data in your database would need to go through some level of encryption again. Um, I highly encourage you to use row level security, which is important. But if there's just some sensitive data that you've got kicking around here, here, um, then you can use this particular simple technique uh, to, uh, to kind of maybe just kind of maybe uh, sort of hash or sort of like um, uh, hide that data from prior and I. So at least it keeps it safe. But of course, you need to make sure you then are creating edge, fun edge functions to call out from your front end application in order to kind of uh, update and insert this particular data. And of course, query that data as well, because you're going to want to return that back. And again, so I highly encourage you to make sure you do uh, implement row level security here as well. And all of these kind of functions that you would create here and um, we utilize row level security under the hood as well just to keep um, that uh, everything about your database nice and safe so there we go hopefully you enjoyed this little time a little kind of like almost like a little live walkthrough here of what we've done here and hope that helps answer some of the questions that you may have on how to do something very simple like this in Superbase. so until the next video i'll see you soon